This exhibition, Modern Masters, tells the story of American art, pretty much where Rinalda's story of American art trails off. So this is a great fit with our collection. When we first heard about the show and we began looking at the checklist and talking with the Smithsonian American Art Museum, uh, we realized pretty quickly that the show was tailor-made for our galleries. Our high ceilings and white walls just fit the show perfectly. This exhibition is not just your average exhibition that comes into Rinalda and goes on display. It has um, really challenged our staff, our curator, our preparator, our installation department, collections department. In preparation for the arrival of a new show, the gallery walls have to be taken down, rearranged, painted. There's a quite a long process that goes on to prep the gallery for the next show. I think what you'll notice is how we're able to go from one gallery to a completely different gallery fairly quickly. The walls move uh, and rearrange uh, pretty rapidly and then, you know, it's a lot of the prep work. It's the uh, mudding of those seams to make everything look like it's all uniform and then paint paint, 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 paint. It's a lot of paint. In this case, I think the challenge was to literally fit the works in the gallery because they are so large. And the challenge was where do we put the temporary walls so that you still have a nice flow through the gallery and yet each work you know, gets its, its time in the spotlight. I've recently started using a Google SketchUp to do a, our exhibition design and it's been a big help for us. We can see what the works are gonna look like before the show. What is just so gratifying is to watch our staff and um, to see them come up with a, a range of creative ideas to work with the logistics and the challenges that this exhibition offers us. Our uh, installation team is gonna be Myself, as the preparator, are uh, two registrars, Elizabeth and Suzanne, um, an assistant preparator, Eric, and also, since we are dealing with larger scale works, we have a courier coming to supervise the installation of some of those works. Essentially, the crates go through our building, through our uncrating room, into a very large elevator, up to the second floor, and into the gallery. And then they acclimate for 24 hours. Uh, so that way any climate change that's going on in the crate takes a long amount of time. You don't want to rush anything with the artwork. You want to let it settle in uh, to the space and acclimate to where it's at, almost kind of like a fish tank. Then after that process, uh, we begin the un unpacking. We're able to really see, especially at the uncrating uh, level, just how fragile the artworks are. It is exciting to open the crates for the first time. To see them you know, up close and personal is really fun. We have a different experience with the artwork than uh, most people do. We're appreciating a lot of things that nobody else will see because a lot of these things are taking place on the back or are the challenges that we have to deal with as far as actually moving it from point A to point B to putting it on the wall. Looks good. They open the crates, they take the works out of the crates and place them on a table to make sure that the condition of each work has not changed since it traveled. Even though I've seen these works for quite a while now, I don't know what the backs look like. So I don't know exactly how they're all going to install. Seeing the gallery go from sort of an empty white space to the finished product, an exhibition, is really exciting and um, it's wonderful to see the public's response to that. When it's real life, 3D, and you've got the texture of the art and you've got the actual lighting on it and the people coming through and the excitement and the energy, it's a big difference. It feels great. You can really appreciate the work that you put in and see the, uh, the rewards of it. The thing about the paintings in this exhibition is that you really can't appreciate them or understand them until you're standing in front of them. You just can't anticipate the scale of, of some of these enormous canvases until you're standing in front of them and realize that you are actually dwarfed by some of these paintings. And while these huge, large-scale, vibrant canvases 
appear as if they were made just yesterday. They were, in fact, made in another point in time, a time that um, was full of transition and change for American artists and American culture at large. These works are perhaps not necessarily meant to be figured out, but are instead meant to be experienced. So when you stand in front of a huge abstract landscape by Joan Mitchell, how does it make you feel when you approach a sculpture by Anne Truitt or Seymour Lipton or Ibram Lhasa? Where do you stand? How do you approach it? What we've done here at Rinalda House is we've really equipped visitors who may not know much about mid-20th century art. We've given them the tools and the materials and the entry points to really engage and think about life at this point in time. We also have questions scattered throughout the gallery. Which work is heroic? Which work breathes? Which work would you choose to share with a child? And we've designed these questions to get you to think about these works in a different way. Rinalda House is actually the sixth and final venue of a national tour for the exhibition Modern Masters. So this is the only time that people will have an opportunity to see these great works of art in Modern Masters right here in Winston-Salem.